Starting with the basic player controller that we put together in the last episode, we already have a player with a state machine who can uh, idle, run and jump in the air. The first thing we need to do is add an input for an attack. To do this we're going to go into project, project settings and input and we're going to create an, attack, uh, an action called attack. We will set this to be a key and I'm going to use the comma key. Next up in the player script we need a new boolean for can input. And we'll set that to be true. We'll add a new method at the bottom for ready for input and we're going to reset that boolean back to true at that point. Within our get input direction we're going to check that boolean and if we can't input then we're simply going to return 0.0. .0. Next thing we need is an animation for our attack. We go into animation player, just I swap this to 2D. Uh, we go down here, we go animation new, and we should call this attack one. We're just going to zoom in slightly here. Make sure the snap is set to 0.1 as our other animations are. We go into the sprite and we find the starting frame for our attack animation. In this sprite sheet, it's at 26. We keyframe, create the reset track, move it on, and then increment. This animation is exactly one second long, so that's fine. Make sure it's not looping, and that is done. Within the same animation, we're going to add a new track, call method track. We're going to call a method from the player script and we are going to call the ready for input method roughly after when the sword swing has completed. So you right click, insert key, click on ready for input and that's that sorted. Remember to save. Next thing to do is to create a new state. Go into the state machine, add a new state find our player state, rename that to attack1. We right click and extend the script and I'm just going to use an empty template. As with our other states we need to export the node path to our animation player uh, so that we can link up with that from this state. We're also going to add a, vo a boolean in uh, for action pressed and then we're going to extend our enter state. As before, the first thing we're going to do is play our attack one animation using the animation player. We're also going to set the boolean that we just created in the player script to be false at the point in time that this state is being entered. And we're going to set the action press to be false as well, just to make sure. Next up, we need our physics update method to which we are going to add our movement code. What this is basically going to do is stop the player from moving uh, left and right, uh, lerping to zero on the x-axis. It's going to apply gravity and then we're going to move the player velocity down. Uh, well, we're going to move the player velocity based on that velocity value. We need to transition to the idle animation once the animation player has finished playing um, and the player input direction is not zero. Lastly, we just need to track whether the player has pressed the attack button whilst within this state uh, and this will come into play in a little bit. We need to make sure that the animation player that we've exported is linked to the animation player within our node tree. Within our idle state script we need to extend our transitional uh, section to track whether or not the attack key has been pressed. If the attack key is pressed, then we are going to transition to attack one. And we do the same with the run animation. The air animation is slightly different because we don't actually have the same kind of um, script set up in, in quite the same way. We want to uh, transition to the attack irrespective of whether or not the player is on the floor. Consequently, we need to add in a new uh, if statement just above the if the player is on the floor statement. 
If you play the game now, you should find that, as before, we can run, we can uh, jump, and we can also attack. However, we've only got a single attack at this point. And no matter how many times we press attack, this is all we can do. OK, time for a quick refactor. The first thing we need to do is rename our attack1 script to be attack. That will mess up our uh, code screen here, so we're just going to close this one and we're going to open up the attack separately. The first thing we need to change is we need to add a couple more exported variables for animation and next state. Within our enter method, we are going to play the animation. And within our physics update, we are going to add a new clause that basically checks to see if next state is defined, player can input, and action has been pressed. In that exact scenario, we are going to transition to the next state. We now need new animations for our attack 2 and attack 3. As before, we're going to find the starting frame. For attack 2, this is at 39. Make sure the pointer is at the zero time. Add a keyframe. Increase the time, increase the frame. Click that a few more times. As before, it's exactly one second long. We add the call method track on the player. And at the end of the sword stroke, about here, we right click, insert the key, and tell our node that we are ready for input. Do the same for attack three. This animation on this particular sprite sheet starts at 52. and is one second long, so it ends on 61. Now we need the new states added to our state machine. Create a new player state, call it attack2, and another one called attack three. We're going to attach the script for attack two and attack three. And that script will be the attack script. Finally, we need to populate our script variables. So for attack one, the animation that we want to play is attack 1, the next state is attack 2. In the attack 2 state we want to play attack 2, and our next state is attack 3, and we also need to set our animation player because we haven't done that yet. For attack 3 we set the animation player, and we tell it to play attack 3, but we don't want it to transition to a fourth state, so we're going to leave the next state variable blank. Remember to save. When you're in the game now, you will find that if you press the attack button once, obviously it only plays the attack animation, but if you press it more than once within the correct time, you can get two attacks or even three attacks. And this also works in the air, so you now have a player that can combo attack. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial. Um, if you've really enjoyed it, then I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. That'd be superb. Um, all the links to the code will be down in the descriptions, links to the GitLab page, uh, etc., for both the basic player controller and obviously this, um, this controller as well. Thanks very much, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.